Hi, I'm Draft, and first and foremost, I do hope that you and yours are all safe and sound in these times of uncertainty. It's tough, it's very difficult, and it's a heartbreaking time for some. Just know that we will get through it, and we will get through it together, as long as we continue to help each other and work together. So with that said, I'm going to bring you a new Inside the Project for a track called Tobago, which was from my From Inside EP, which was released on Mousetrap some years ago. I also cut myself 20 minutes before filming this with my cutthroat razor blade. So if I start leaking blood, just focus on the video. Let's dive in. You Right, so this is a busy period for a lot of people, so we're not going to hang around, we're just going to sail on through it. So this is the track, if you're unfamiliar with it. Kind of my take on some melodic dance house thing. Uh, so the first thing we hear when the track commences is the vocals. They are two vocal samples that are taken from a cappella songs, which I won't reveal. And they are attempting to be discommodious. They're not meant to make a phrase as such. They're kind of just meant to create some form of melody um, that will take shape and take form against the bass line when it eventually is introduced. Now, the processing behind both of them before they get to a bus is there's some EQ on one, or well actually there's EQ on both. Uh, and then when they get to that bus, <clears throat> the first bus, don't know why I've got two, this was done years ago. Uh, but I've put a multi-band compressor at the start of the track, uh, start of the mixer chain, sorry, because it probably made sense at the time. Uh, some reverb, a couple of EQs, a delay, and another multi-band compressor at the end, I'm, I'm assuming to smash it all together. So if I dry, that sample in particular, it's quite harsh, quite sharp. Um, and then it goes into another bus, which is uh, has a camel fat at the end, which is basically just acting as a limiter and taking off a bit of the low end. Uh, and some EQ, which kind of brings out the high end. And this runs pretty much for the majority of the track. Uh, it is um, layered with, um, I want to say layered, I mean in a counter melody sense, with uh, another sample which is kind of like a, a droning kind of it's a it's kind of like a droning it's taken from a halo, uh, a halo sample as you can clearly see the sample name but it's it's simply a sample that acts as kind of a, a, counter, counter, a counter melodic drone, which also acts as a harmony underneath the vocals. And it just, because it's a pretty repetitive vocal, the a cappella samples. So if I have that extra kind of layer in there, which is noticeable towards the end, Adds a kind of, it kind of helps with the, the discommodious um, vocals because it's kind of a, what you'd call a, almost like a groaning or a moaning. And it's, it's kind of, not, not a depressant in that respect, but it's kind, it kind of brings a somber tone to the track. Um, I don't know if that was a reflection of my mood at the time because it was years ago. Who knows what I was thinking. But that's pretty much the vocals on the intro uh, that run throughout. They're quite simple. They're not meant to make up phrases like Berry or whoever, or Volaflex or whoever does that in this instance. It's merely something to have on top of the layers, um, such as the bass, the melody, uh, and the percussion in this track. Right, so the next part of the track is the melody, which it's fairly simple. It's two instances of a piano loop uh, layered with another one. There's one kind of off-key kind of techno-y kind of stabby melody thing. Very descriptive. And an instance of Profit, which was rendered out or bounced down and 
split so it could be panned left and right. So the first thing we hear is the melody samples, which are kind of piano loops that I'd load into FL Slicer, Fruity Slicer, whatever it's called now. And I tweaked a little and rearranged, refloated again. Um, we have an almost distant sound on them. Um, they're kind of almost push right back, so they just sit under. Uh, I've gone into some OTT, some multiband compression, a transient shaper, EQ, uh, which is, appears to be taken out of the mids, uh, again, to kind of give it a bit more stereo width. Uh, an EQ at the end, which literally rolls off everything. Um, and then the instance of the Valhalla delay, uh, and that goes into a bus just to kind of keep them together, I suppose, uh, for mixing purposes. But the tracks themselves, kind of, you know, just kind of counterintuitive little bits at the end that sit somewhere underneath the vocal um, and in the background of the, the percussion. So these run for sort of half of the track, shall we say, kind of counter melodies to the vocals, which I should play together. Kind of work together, uh, which is then introduced together with the Prophet. which you can hear again. They've got the slight offset. How much is that point? I can't even see the thing anymore since I've rearranged this. Probably 18 milliseconds, who knows? Um, 13, so the, the they've already been processed, so I couldn't tell you what's behind them. How I got to them, how I made the synth, but I know it is in profit, Artoria's profit. Uh, and they are panned quite, quite a fast amount. They're 70% left, 70% right with the offset as well to create that harsh effect. Haas, love that word, uh, kind of the, the, the widening the stereo width. And they go into a, uh, a bus, LFL bus, which has a bit of trash on it, um, which looks like it is purely just uh, a slight bit of distortion on the mid range. Uh, some compression EQ, which strips out the high end. So if I play these dry, They're kind of a bit more harsh, which obviously counteracts and is very counterintuitive to what the track is. Um, so the last part of the melody, I told you we weren't slowing down on this one. Last part of the melody is this. A heavily processed kind of sample, which I won't tell you where it's from. Kind of it, unrecognizable, I hope. Uh, if I remove all the effects on the chain, nothing to it. And then I slowly introduce things back in. Obviously I've got the OTT because I like to smash things back in the day. Um, some delay, <clears throat> some more delay, some EQ reverb, all that just to create this kind of rounding, a bit more polished um, attention grabbing section which combined with the other elements, i.e. the profit, and combined obviously with the whole piece, it has this kind of offset groove purely in the way that the slices are cut, which is through no, no intention of my own. It's kind of just the way they fell. So I, kept it I mean why not but that melody pretty much runs throughout uh, there's certain breaks where it continues and then where it's ushered back in all together so they run in kind of a, a sanctimonious harmony you know but that's pretty much the bulk of the melodies it didn't require too much um, the idea of this track was to focus on the, the percussion and build elements around that, which we'll get to. Um, so that's the melody. 
How quick is this? I told you we're not messing around. Right, in this segment, I'm gonna combine the sub bass and the effects together, purely because there's very few of them. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the sub. Now the sub, as usual, is uh, a three-ton oscillator. Um, one is a square and the other one is a sine. Not sure why I did that, probably to add thickness to it, but we'll figure that out once we get there. So the sub itself is it seems quite um quite wide and that's purely because it's a psychoacoustic thing um i've got the one instance of uh free osc another one sort of bulk out the low end uh, and i've done this purely because i wanted it to be a thicker sub now i also have a um sample in here pulp fiction alex reese purely because if i unmute it i wanted stereo width on a sub which i know you shouldn't do but what the hell it worked and i wanted a, a kind of a weird phasing effect to, to aid the groove of the sub and the ebb and flow of the track um, one, one, once I combine all of them together, you kind of get the um, the flow of the track, and because that's heard before the percussion and the drums are introduced, and alongside the uh, melody and the vocal, you kind of begin to to feel this momentum um, already being generated, and it's it's. For me, it's kind of the, usually I try to make the percussion the, the, the groove of the track, but in this instance, where I had the sub introduced alongside the melody and the vocal, before any drum programming came into play, you, you already get the shuffle and the feel. And although certain uh, melodic elements like the vocals and the melody are are offset or non-quantized and things like that because of the sway and the almost the uh, almost the lfo movement of the the sub you kind of already begin to catch your timing and catch the rhythm which i really liked uh now that's out of the way um actually this last bit is just a sub pitch where where the sub just dips i just created it on a separate channel right so the fx um not many they look to be but there's not many really at all uh first thing we heard uh, we hear is this sample heard this in a naughty movie sounds cool i have actually heard it in other tunes so it, it's just from a sample pack so it's not me watching naughty films um so that's the first one and once i find that it's that's quite heavily processed but the main emphasis is on the stereo width uh, which is at the bottom of the chain and the delay and the reverb i've also got a weird kind of if i copy that value it's kind of a it's kind of an industrial sound almost um this is underneath and then i have these two pieces which are kind of like flute sounds, pro, uh, heavily processed flute sounds. And I've got one that's high, another that's an octave below, maybe two octaves below. Um, and then they, 45, they are, well, the low end is less processed than, than the uh, high end one, purely because obviously I want them to sit well together. And I also have a sonar ping, which is a great noise. I like to throw these, these weird kind of obscure sounds in because they add an almost weird dynamic to something. So I've got the ping uh, of the sonar and I also have the melody of the, of the sonar ping. Which 
which is quite simply just a sonar ping sonar ping so um they all sit together i have uh this sample which is where is that pitch to that's pitched up 500 that's pitched up 500 semitones so that's kind of um a harmony as it were yeah pretty much and then the last effect of note is just that reverse kind of drone i don't think It's a sample that I've obviously glitched and processed and distorted previously to make it harmonically rich. And I've just reversed it. And the processing on that is simply some EQ and a, an instance of uh, reverb. So the effects, just add, once again, add a new dynamic on top of what we already have. Everything's meant to be laid together and complement each other as well as they can. Um, and where you've got these kind of soft, nice melodies, like the sonar melody as such, um, it goes against the discommodious kind of awkward, not so much, not so much haunting, but the kind of the acapella, the feel of the acapella. Um, it's kind of a best of the both, in my eyes anyway. Right, so the drums are very, very simple in this track. Uh, so simple, in fact, that this will probably be the shortest and quickest segment that I've ever done. It's simply a tans bar kick that's processed. So all I've done is I've added uh, an element of almost like a white noise, the, the tail end of a hat on top, and I bounce that down together to give it this So you can hear the tail at the end of that. Um, I think I've actually emphasized that with an EQ, I have indeed. Kind of flat, brings out that little high end. Um, the kick pretty much carries the track. It has no envelope automation on the, the volume, on a filter on it, it has nothing to kind of lead to a crescendo or ushering a new um, bar, anything like that. It's just flat bang four by four all the way through. It's aided with a, uh, what I've called uh, a ghost hat because it's, it doesn't really, doesn't really do much except that it ushers in very, very gently just before. So it gives it that, not a suction kind of feel, but it aids the transient of the kick by given a, a psychoacoustic uh, feeling of something. It's the best way I can describe it, poorly. Um, there's also a hat, which uh, I believe is, is distorted. It's got some OTT on, it's got an EQ, uh, just taking out the bottom end, and it's got a transient shape which I no longer use, and I don't know if that's crashed and I've uninstalled it because those settings look very very weird either way if I mute it no apparently I did set it that way weird so we have the main core of the drum track is simple kind of oomsie beat as we call it the kick snare uh, kick hat kick hat um, there are a couple of symbols in here which I think they might be the same sample. Uh, one is just, they're, they're kind of pitched octaves apart, as you can see, uh, and they are going into, I think they're going into the same channel as well. They are, oh, what do you know? Uh, distortion, EQ, reverb, delay, EQ. Dry. Nice, but there's no atmosphere to them. And with the, delay, with the delay before the reverb, it kind of brings out that nice whoosh sound. 
it's the easiest way to describe it. Um, so that is pretty much the core of the drums. There's nothing special, nothing fancy. There's no additional processing because I'm a firm believer that if it doesn't need it, why do it? Um, you're just taking up frequency usage that you'll probably need for something else. Uh, you could potentially cause uh, additional phase issues once you've rectified the ones that you needed to. So the core of the drum work is actually done within the percussion, which we're about to cover. Cover, I should say. But I mean, the drums don't need to be any more than they are. They're in key. They work. Leave them. So now we move on to the percussion. Right, so let's jump into my percussion, which is the one thing that everyone compliments me uh, within my music, which is amazing. Um, I don't say how to do anything special to it, but the percussion in this track, for example, was because this track was so early into my, my career with Mousetrap as such, it was one of the things that stood out to a lot of people. So let's break it down. Right, so. already pretty groovy um there's quite a lot of it when i said about the track um being based around certain elements the percussion is one of them um it's kind of the fundamental of the track if i play the track and remove the percussion it sounds so boring however with the percussion just layers upon layers Right, so the easiest way to do this is probably to go with what elements you hear first as they're introduced. So, it's quite a lot. Um, so the first thing we hear is uh, some stage percussion, which all together. If I put a metronome behind this. It's almost a bouncy kind of carnival kind of flow. If I take out the uh, instances of the additional percussion that sit amongst the stage percussion, it's... But once you introduce those, or in fact, I'll, I'll solo them to begin, to begin with. It's basically, they're not paradiddles, so maybe they are, but it's, I, it's my way of I create one loop, <clears throat> although I hate the word loop, I, I create one rhythmic pattern with one core element of, of, of percussion that I, I instigate. And then I do another one and I do all these separate little pieces and then I start to piece them together. So that's really the first instance of percussion that we hear in the track. It helps the ebb and flow of the track uh, along with the sub. Then we get the introduction of uh, some breaks, actually. So the first break, oops, the first break we hear, which is, is from a, uh, an actual drum beat or drum, drum break called the Hossam break, which is probably from a track by someone called Hossam. I should probably look that up rather than being so ignorant. And this is heavily, once I find it, Oh, amateur hour. Hey, nope. Ah, 22. Got there in the end. So on channel 22, uh, EQ, distortion, reverb, dry. Nothing. Um, spruce it up. EQ seems to be doing nothing. I've got the stereo enhancer. EQ run at the low end. OTT driving it a little. Aha. So it's basically from the reverb and the delay where the most of this is coming from, where the majority of the workload towards getting the end effect from the break is. Uh, underneath that, I have the Apache break, the infamous Apache break, one of the greatest drum patterns, drum breaks, drum tracks ever used. I've kind of butchered it horribly i've uh, clearly distorted it because that was the thing to do uh, i've quite aggressively boosted some of the eq uh, on the mids and low mids as well as a bit in the treble 
the transient shaper, which I think this plugin is now busted because it keeps setting the settings to zero. So whatever I did there, I did something. And the stereo EQ, uh, this is the drum, kind of relatively normal. Uh, and then I have um, another break, which is basically just from a vengeance loop that I've just spliced down together. And then combined with these additional percussions that we had. Again, it's, it's kind of one with one rhythmic pattern here, one there and another one on top and then mesh them all together. And I think looking from this, I haven't had to remove or delete any of the, the, the one shot samples from the groove as it was initially introduced, which is helpful because then obviously it seems to, that everything fell into place. Or at the time, I could have actually produced it all together in one bulk and then started splitting it out, which sounds a bit more sensible, but probably not something I would have thought of at the time. So those percussions carry the, the uh, percussion elements, I should say, carry the track to an extent where we are then introduced with a drum break. Um, this is the worm which is again another classic break, especially in the, the, the world of drum and bass. If I take off the processing, relatively bland, relatively plain, doesn't look like it's stitched too cleanly. I've sliced it, I've put it in the FL slicer, but it, again, there's no, where well, I would slice that down and I'd have rented that out and then I'd play the transients and I'd shape it. This looks a bit like more thrown together as a mash. So I've got that. I've got another percussive element, which is just emphasizing the, 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 I think it's a wood block on the worm. This percussion hit is additionally emphasizing that, that section. Then I've got some hats. Again, it's like the, the worm is the foundation for this rhythmic pattern itself. Additional stair on the off. Well, that's on a that's on a on a on a downbeat or whatever the hell, and then it gets a bit offset. And then I've got an additional. So combining those six patterns together, or six uh, channels, I should say, on top of the other four. Again, it doesn't look like anything was rearranged from the original pattern. So. Everything was meticulously planned from the beginning. Whether or not I meant that, I don't know, and I won't lie to you. Uh, and then I've reintroduced the other elements of percussion again. And that is the core bulk of the percussion and the rhythmic pattern that accompanies the track. Essentially providing the groove that is kind of generated with the, the rhythmic phase weird kind of feeling from the sub uh, and that sonar melody the only last minute addition we have of the percussion is two little loop patterns one's a bongo and the other one i'm not entirely sure what that mauw reference is um, but these parts were included these two sections were included just to usher out the track and add a bit of flavor something different to it Almost take the track to a different, not entirely different place, but kind of give it a different feel on the outro, just to just to provide a bit of interest. So when you get to whatever it is, four minutes, 30 seconds of the track, then it's something a bit more different. It's not a longest track in the world. So it's, it's more about the flow. And I, I believe that's what the percussion was set out to do, purely because there's so many instances of percussion more than anything else in the track. Um, and that's pretty much the percussion. Uh, I don't know what these two things down the bottom are. I kept them in because for fear of deleting them. But that is pretty much Tobago. Um, but in its entirety, in its simplicity. <laughs>